Hello, good evening. Welcome to State of Affairs. We are live on GH1 TV and we are streaming live as well on GH1TV.com. My name is Nana Abba Anamwa. Tonight we are focusing on ROPA, of course, is the Representation of the People Amendment Act, Act 699, and that well, when it was passed, was to enable Ghanaians living abroad to vote. Well, it's been years, almost a decade, or maybe over a decade, a little over a decade, and it's still not working. There are some Ghanaians who are actually pushing this law, and they are currently in court with the EC. We'll be hearing from the gentleman who's been leading uh, um, this uh, project, and he's in the person of Kofi Kranting. He's the CEO for Progressive Alliance Movement. Also, the Media Foundation for West Africa says that the NPP's communicators use foul language more than any other political party in this country. Later on, we'll be talking to two politicians uh, from the NDC and the NPP to look at intemperate language, also the kind of utterances our politicians make on radio and also find out if indeed the NPP communicators really lead that pack. So join me. Uh, join the conversation using the hashtag State of Affairs across all social media and we'll be very happy to read it with the rest of the country and beyond. Uh, once again, you're welcome to the show. We'll go straight away to the issue about the peop representation of the People Amendment Act, that's Act 699. And uh, uh, Kofi Kranting, as I told you, is the CEO of the Progressive Alliance Movement, PAM for short, that's how you want to call it, isn't it? Ha. That's correct. Okay, That's it's good correct. to have you in the studio. Right, you've been, have me. you've been in the country for how, how long? Uh, a couple of weeks now. A couple of weeks, and you, you spent all the time going to court. Uh, not all the time, uh -huh. but for the most part. For the most part. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and I understand your case has been adjourned uh, to somewhere in June. June 7th. June That's 7th. Correct. Now, can you tell us exactly what transpired in the last hearing, and um, then we'll get into the other issues. Well, uh, just to abbreviate it, mm. it's been adjourned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we're going back June 7th. And, of course, uh, I think in all fairness, and this is, of course, was expected, uh, EC has been given an opportunity to prepare their remarks um, and come back June 7th uh, with their remarks. And mm -hmm. at that point, uh, we're hoping for uh, to move one step closer to a judgment from the judge. So uh, it's exciting that at least we're moving forward on this. Um, and and we, we're looking for the due process, okay, to go through the whole thing. Uh, I think uh, we're not asking for much. After 10 years, that's the least that we could ask for. Uh, just so you know and understand, uh, this is not, you know, the big question now is why did you wait till now because mm -hmm. it seems as if everything was planned for the election uh, period. Yeah, because that was going to be my next question. I yeah. mean, I, don't you think it's too little too late now? I mean, we've got just a few months to the election. Um, we, we went into the election in 2012. Between mm -hmm. 2012 and 2016, mm -hmm. uh, what have you been doing? Uh, we've been writing to the EC. Okay. Uh, back when uh, Ferry Jam was the chairman, we wrote to him. We wrote several letters. Our chairman, who's actually in town, Dr. Kofi Boateng, mm -hmm. sat down with uh, Afri a couple of times uh, to get a disposition, a solid disposition on uh, this uh, matter. And what uh, was but he we told? Didn't. What, 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 what was the response from the him response the as they pushed the ball? Okay. Uh, that's standard procedure. Well, I wouldn't say standard procedure, but it seems as if the only thing we've gotten is for the EC to move the ball. Uh, to the next episode, and that's why it almost seems as if this was planned. But uh, we've been back and forth easy for a bunch of years now. Mm -hmm. um, and because Afrijan did not respond to the letters when Ms. Charlotte say, uh, Honorable Charlotte say, took her seat, mm -hmm. uh, we sent her a letter of, uh, of introduction and gave her a kind of like uh, an introduction to everything we've been working with uh, Afrijan about. And we didn't get a response from her. Uh, we sent her the last letter we sent to Ms. Charlotte to say was uh, actually dated August uh, 2015. Uh, we copied all her commissioners to make sure, uh, in all fairness, everybody was, 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 uh, had gotten a copy of the letter. Right. And to this day, we didn't get a response. We went on and uh, we went to, we took the uh, ambassador, U.S. ambassador, 
uh, Ghana's ambassador to the U.S. Uh, we brought him to uh, the U.S. Congress uh, with our hopes that we will get a response from him uh, regards to the same issue. Uh, it was promises that he was going to get with EC and EC was going to get back with us. Uh, and we haven't gotten anything back. This was in um, actually February 26th of this year. So we were left with no other option than to push this thing further, which right. our next step uh, was to go to court. So um, this is not something we planned it to be so. We would like not to be in court, but it, we had no other option but to bring this to court. Mm. And all we want, all we asking is for the Electric Commission to implement something that's already law. We can't ask for more. We're not asking for a law to be made. This is a law that's You do that's realize how expensive it is, though? I mean, the, the cost cannot be a justification for a delay. Okay. But it is exp expensive. Says who? Well, if, if for instance, if, if you have to get every Guinean abroad mm -hmm. voting, mm -hmm. I mean, even tracing them, uh -huh. I mean, how many, I mean, I'm sure there are Ghanaians in every country, isn't it? Okay, that's a solid point. Yeah. But who is making that uh, uh, assumption that it's expensive? You see, th that's one of the big problems because we haven't heard from the EC yet. That's an assumption you are making, just as much as the same assumption so many people have made, right. but we really don't have the facts. Mm -hmm. So you cannot start dealing with a problem if you don't have the facts about the problem. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're saying that, listen, if the EC had come out and say that, hey, listen, this is, we need X amount of dollars to fix this problem, then it could be the focal point of a conversation. Right. We don't have that yet. And after 10 years, if we don't have the basis for a conversation as to the logistics of implementing this law, then we, le we really left with no other option but to go ahead and push for the, the court to come down and, and hammer down and say, come on, get this thing done. Now, what makes it even uh, uh, more intriguing is the fact that when President Mahama was in the United States uh, in September 2014, we, we asked him and said, his Excellency, we are Ghanaians abroad. You come here and you talk to us about coming to Ghana to right. invest. Bring all your investments to Ghana. Okay, we're going to do that. But how about including us in the process so it seems as if this is equitable? Yeah, why not? What was his response? Get, listen, if you would go down to your fact to fact check this, you mm -hmm. can have your guys fact check, uh, mm -hmm. fact check this. And President Mahama said, hammer it down on EC and get them to implement the law. That's, and that was his response. Absolutely. And what was even more interesting was the question about cost came up. Mm -hmm. And guess what he said? Price was not going to be an issue. Cost was not going to be an issue. If you get easy to implement this, we will find the money. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but basically that's what he said. You see, so that tells you clearly that money is not an issue. If EC came out and said, listen, we need X amount of dollars, then, uh, I mean, maybe there could be a basis for it one way or the other, but they haven't even said that yet. So all we're saying is, is the law was passed. And, and another thing that I think all Ghanaians and everybody should know is before a bill goes from being a bill to become law, all these considerations are made, Nanaba. So you cannot go back after it's become law that somehow we didn't consider pricing, so we should go back and rejuggle this thing. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. It's a law. Implement it. And really, you're, you're not really asking for much. I mean, you're praying no. uh, that you be registered as voters outside the jurisdiction of the republic. Absolutely. To be able to participate in every election or referendum, you know, to be issued with ID it's cards. It's the law. If you take that a look at, what, Section 17... Uh, article 17, Section 2, um, uh, Article 42, and mm -hmm. Article 33, Section 5 of the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, Act 699, like you correctly stated, mm -hmm. it says it right there. If you're Ghanaian, 18 years of age, and you are of sound mind, it's the responsibility of the Electoral Commission to, pro to provide the instrument for you to vote, regardless of your country of residents. Right. So that's all we're asking for. Listen, Ghana is incredible, well, more democratic than a lot of countries in Africa. The fifth most democratic, we okay. understand, according so, to the president. Okay, recently. so now yeah. let's take a look at this, Nanaba. You have South Sudan, you have Liberia, you have 
um, uh, Mozambique, you have Mali, you have Liberia, mm -hmm. all these places can vote. They are implementing laws like what ROPA we are asking for. So for Ghana, um, you know, we, we, we come out to be very democratic, more than these countries are, and yet our people don't, can vote. That's, that's a problem. That's a problem. And, okay. you know, so that, that's our position. And we don't think we're asking okay. for much, like you I, said. I just want to send you uh, to a comment that was made by a gentleman in the UK who leads the NDC in the UK. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, the UK chapter mm -hmm. of the NDC. And uh, he said the Electoral Commission is incapable of implementing the uh, ROPA, uh, particularly for this year's election. He goes on to give a reason why he thinks. I mean, he doesn't speak for the EC, so I don't know in what capacity mm -hmm. he was saying the EC cannot implement. He's not a spokesman for the mm -hmm. EC, so he had no rights. But, uh, I mean, uh, you've been hearing comments like yeah, this. Yeah, I uh, had comments. Yeah. I had comments, and it's funny. I mean, listen, first of all, let's take a backdrop. What are opinions? Opinions are just opinions. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, everybody has a right to an opinion. So everybody could say anything they want. But let's take a look at the law. We are talking, we, and plus, this is funny, because for any member of a party to come out and actually say that, you know what, uh, there is a problem, you see this and that, and maybe perhaps they shouldn't mm -hmm. implement it. That's a huge concern to me and their allegiance to their party. You know why? Because you know good to your party if you can't vote. Yeah. So they should be actually fighting with us to make sure that EC will implement it so that they will not be a liability to their party. Because it doesn't even suggest that the people living outside the country belong to just one political party. No, anyway. that's a, so they all stand to benefit if every Ghanaian abroad is Absolutely. This is a human rights fight. It's got nothing to do with party. We're not politically, we, we're not, we don't care about. All we want to do is for the Ghanaian living abroad to be able to vote. Okay. Now, it, it, then it comes down to the issue of the number of countries. As I said in earlier, mm -hmm. you find Ghanaians almost everywhere, in every country. That's absolutely now, correct. Now, what are your expectations mm -hmm. that they begin the implementation with a number of countries, a set number of countries? Is, is that part of the things you're pushing for? Well, let me just say this mm -hmm. for a couple of things. So, in all fairness... It's been 10 years, okay? Now, the Electoral Commission, just so everybody knows, has the mandate, constitutional mandate, mm -hmm. for them to come out with the instrument. Now, first of all, a lot of people are asking, what on earth is this ROPA thing these guys are asking? Because it seems like it's a lot. First of all, it's not a big deal. A lot of countries have implemented it and doing it very successfully. So. Our position is this, if you were asked to come forth with something you don't have a clue about, all you have to do is to find somebody who knows how to do it well, copy them, and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, but you should know this better than anybody else. <laughs> this is the name of the game. So we're not asking the Electric Commission to reinvent the wheel when it comes to starting something new. No, that's not what we ask. We're asking for something everybody knows about. Right? So when it comes to all the countries in the world, and well, you have a responsibility to deliver. That's our position. Mm -hmm. As far as you finding out where you start and how many countries you start, well, I guess that's why you're the Electoral Commission. We're not going to tell you how to do your job. If we have to tell you, then we're going to go back to uh, what our dear NDC mm -hmm. sympathizer in uh, uh, England said that these guys are not capable of, and that's a big word when you say somebody's not capable of. But are you telling me that EC is not capable of doing this Well, he doesn't job? speak for the EC. I don't think the EC would even be pleased with that comment. But this is what I'm saying. That's yeah. why the EC should not be pleased about anybody's suggestion. Somehow there is a notion that they will not be able to figure this thing out. What happens if you don't succeed? Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't see us not succeeding. It's, we're already successful, you know why? You're because very it's... successful because you've got all of us talking, which is very good, uh -huh. you know, for the process. But I mean, if you are unable to vote in, in this election, you probably would have to come down to Ghana to vote. But if you're not successful in getting your friends, your colleagues, your family, uh, living abroad to participate in this election, what, what would you do? Well, first of all, that... that, that you find that disappointing? I wouldn't find... Well, it, it will be disappointing. 
But my point is, I don't see that happening. And let me tell you why I don't see that happening. Right. Because ROPA in itself is happening. Now, now, but in case you didn't know, uh, Ghanaians in missions and embassies of around course. the world vote. Yeah. Now, it's based on the same law that they vote. So part of ROPA works. So it's kind of hard for a citizen to accept the fact that uh, maybe somehow part of ROPA can work for certain people and it can't work for I mean, other that, people. That's why others, other people who are not diplomats find the whole process discriminatory. Absolutely. Okay. You, you with me? So we cannot accept that from a standpoint. And I think we have grounds to move this further to say that, listen, if it cannot work for all, then it can't work for anybody. You with me? So I think the Electric Commission, I'm very optimistic that the Electric Commission, with the genius of Ms. Charlotte to say, will get this thing to work. On that note, I have to say a big thank you to you. Thank you for having us. Is a CEO for the Progressive Alliance Movement. Wish you all the best and a safe journey when you uh, decide to go back. Thank you so much. Thanks for being on the show. It's been a beautiful time being here. Thanks so much. <laughs> Have us again. Definitely. All right. So we're doing our countdown now to the elections later this year. We're all looking forward to it. And Ben Epson has been doing the countdown for EIB. If you haven't downloaded the EIB Election Hub app yet, well, it's time to do that because I've seen the numbers rising. The opinion poll is really interesting and it is on the EIB Election Hub app. Oh, that's a mouthful. Right, so download it right now in the Google uh, Store, the Play Store, they call it, or in the iOS Store on Apple if you're using Apple. And have fun enjoying that opinion poll. The numbers are rising. Are you participating? It's very important. Here is Ben Epson with a countdown.